A Matter of Principle by James Cotter Chapter 3 Clive, wearing a plain black jacket and his usual well-worn laparous loo gloves, is sitting on a tree stump in a partially forested clearing. An icy frost is underfoot, and cold needles are in the air, biting the skin, keeping the body aware of its surroundings. He's clearly been sat there for a while, as his body seems almost adjusted to the milieu. The early morning is usually Clive's favourite time of the day, as he has plenty of time to think about his life. This morning, though, thoughts about yesterday's events intrude, and the expression on his face is every bit as frosty as the weather. He looks around him and tries to conjure up happier memories. I remember coming through here as a boy, holding me mum's hand, he said aloud, the memories animating, a wistful smile transforming his face. He used to love the park, the greenery, the open air, the spaces. Quiet as well. I suppose, looking back on it, I was quieter. Clive struggles to find the right word, but eventually plucks one out of obscurity. Isolated child. Me mam looked after me well enough, you know, me dad. Again he seemed to search for the words. But enough money, and you know, I was happy enough, but I was always at, at me happiest when I was at the park. Even then I thought, wouldn't it be great just to spend all your time here? With the animals. They considered them vermin, some people, you know. The pigeons and the squirrels, but I don't see them like that. That's the problem nowadays. If it doesn't fit in with their plans, they just got rid of. He said bitterly, not really thinking about the squirrels. Well, I like the old ways. It's quiet enough here. It's... it's nice. That's it. Nice. He said, letting the surroundings calm him once more. They're not firm in any way. It's nice to see, you know, a, a bird sweeting away and a squirrel foraging. I remember I used to play just over there. He points to a sparse bit of undergrowth. There's a little pond in behind. You, you can't really see it from here, but it was a sort of hideaway. I used to go down there. Not many people knew where it was. All the other kids were in the playground. Well, concrete slabs, swings, no thank you. I'd rather go on the green. What's the point of coming to a park if you're not going to go on the greenery? I was over there the other day, had a little sit down, you know, a little think. It's nice to do that every now and again. He said, wistfully preoccupied, as he pondered into the middle distance, aware of his own mortality and his insistence to live his life in a manner of his own choosing. Looking through the paper, seeing about this credit crunch that's coming. They're saying they might need to make cutbacks in certain areas. They're saying about local employees, council and the like. Some of them might not be needed. Aye, what a load of rubbish! I've lived through worse! Depressions come and go like Prime Ministers. I mean, it won't mean our area, of course, said Clive, somebody more confident than his troubled expression would suggest. It'll be those secretaries or people in suits that'll be the first to go. They'll be fools to cut back down here. People like coming through this pack. Saw a kiddie the other day come through with his mam. Looked happy as a larry. It still brings a smile to people's faces. If it doesn't oh, what's it what's it do they say? If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's it. That's my motto. Well, things are changing now. Clive suddenly sits up, straightens himself out, and bellows in a Churchillian manner. Not here though. Not in this park. We shall never surrender. And at that moment, the orangey glow of the sun, sailing clear of the cold, white clouds overhead, bathed the clearing, dappling the rimmed ground with flecks of golden light as it flitted through the branches of the surrounding trees. Clive smiled and took it as a sign from above. See that? That's nice, he said. The sun's coming through the trees there. You couldn't pay for that view. Beautiful. He takes another look and begins to squint as he sees the sun gleaming through the autumn leaves, glimmering as it goes across a stagnated pond. 
Clive smiles gleefully, but a slight crack appears in that once happy smile, like an emperor looking out on his empire on the eve of battle, knowing full well the outcome. Clive's voice cracks slightly when he utters his last goodbye to his safe haven that will now be open for all to plunder and pillage, his hard work and dedication lost under a mire of sickly greed and pestilence. Absolutely beautiful. A Matter of Principle was written and read by James Cotter. The script editors were Denise Halfpenny, Bex Harvey, Ian Guy and Mark Pearson. And the script associates were the Slack Brothers. A Matter of Principle is a 2010 Low Mike production.